the better, I think, lead run. But Kalan had a bit more proximity overall in the chase run, and that kind of balanced it off to a one more time for us. We want to see it go one more time. So we'll see that in a few moments as we move now on to a man a lot of people are watching online, Michael Essa of the DD camp. He is back. He hasn't competed for a year and a half, and he's back in his E46, going up against Zach in the 370Z, which would normally have no chance here, but under these conditions, I think everybody's got a chance. So this is going to be another interesting one. Michael Asset back in the game. Everyone's excited to see him this weekend. And the same thing with Zach. Can he show that a stock 370Z can keep with a Formula D Pro car? Championship winning Formula D Pro car. Let's see what happens. Michael Essa being real aggressive on initiation, but Zach also staying with them as they transition to our first outside zone. Zach keeping a lot of proximity. Michael Essa going very wide, but Zach pulling a great line to hold that proximity as they come up into the bank into our third outside zone. Watch here for Michael Essa to start to pull away, and he does, but Zach dives in. Great timing from Zach as we now start to transition into zones five, six, and seven. And Michael Essa holding a good line, but going a bit wide as we see a few of those cones exploding. And I'm sure our track workers now have a, have a bit of work to do. Yeah, a little bit of cleanup on aisle nine there. I mean, this is this is an interesting one because Michael Essa comes into the first corner, all the gusto, and we're sitting here going, wow, this is great. When he transitions, he realizes he's going way too fast. So he goes off the circuit, putting two wheels off. Watch the transition as he comes back here. Look at this. He's washing, he's washing, and he's off the track here. Now he gets it back together, but it allows Zach to get right up on the door. And this is excellent proximity. You can see no real wavering in the chase position. This transition here is as close as he'd, he'd be comfortable in these conditions doing a really good job and then this is pretty even from both guys as they transition back but watch Essa here he also washes too wide he goes off the track and leads Zach into this big puddle so Zach loses a little bit of proximity but he shouldn't really be out there if Michael Essa isn't out there if you get what I'm saying so for me an advantage to Zach slightly over the first run but Michael Essa he's a pro he's going to have to bring some proximity we expect him to but this is definitely not a cakewalk for Michael Essa he's going to have to put some pressure on but if Zach can continue that sm super smooth flow that he's had all the way through the competition Essa should have all the comp uh, confidence in the world now to go up on the door and be close but I think yeah just a good proximity from Zach there giving him a slight advantage but very much still in the balance yeah this still could go either way I mean Zach obviously not having quite the same horsepower that Michael S has got. I mean, Michael could just turn up the boost if he really felt like it, but in these conditions, I mean, it's only going to be good for what? The run up and maybe one outside. Zone. Exactly. I think Michael was actually trying to do too good a lap. He was being too aggressive, too yeah. much fun. He was having too too much of a good time. So he washed off the track twice. And, and again, that allowed Zach back into the fight twice on that run. So I think Michael's trying to do the perfect run. He could have been a little bit more cautious. I respect that, yeah. but we can't reward that because he is going off the circuit a little bit. So dropping some wheels here and there. Interested to see how this one works out on the second run because you got two very good drivers here in two very different levels of machinery and experience. So I love this about the LZ World Tour is that it's anybody's game and with the track now dry, I mean it's almost bone dry in some areas and completely puddled up in others. So it is very tough to be very consistent here. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to be um, I mean it's it's going to be crazy. It, I, I have a feeling that Zach is going to go all out and just see what he's able to do. But as long as he can hold things together it's, I mean, really, it's his battle to lose at this point. So great initiation from both drivers. Michael Essa on that rear quarter panel right off the gate. Zach, a slower transition into outside zone one. Michael Essa definitely holding that car back while Zach gets the car sorted and up to outside zone three where it's really dry now. We're starting to see the smoke coming off the tires and then back to steam coming off the tires. Michael Essa really slow through that transition, but Zach went super, super wide. As we get into zone five, six, and seven, we get a bit of contact Zach going at a snail's pace to get through the rest of the zone. So did Michael tap him there? I, I can't quite tell. So we'll have to go back to the replay. But Zach definitely slowed the car down in our last set of outside zones, meaning that Michael wasn't able to really get the, you know, the run that he wanted behind him. So through initiation, Essa right there, right on his door. Now we see how slow that transition is for Zach. Big e-brake drop there. And we start to get up into our drier section. They both take off, and you can see Michael Essa lighting up those Accelera tires. Transitioning through here, Zach is pretty slow. Michael has got a ton of angle and has to kind of snap the car back into place to get into outside zone five. And then right here, Zach is putting as much beans as he can, but not able to get the car to go any faster. So one of the hard parts in the rain is just that, that throttle control. You'd think it'd be much easier because it's slick, but it's really, really not. So our judges right now more or less discussing any of the points where the drivers made mistakes. We both know that, you know, these drivers are incredible and can put together solid runs. So 
you start to get a little bit nitpicky as to you know who made more mistakes, who made bigger mistakes, where they made those mistakes. So looks like they're still discussing. But Dave, what do you what do you think? Yeah, we have a decision, and I'll explain it afterwards. But uh, right. it's a tough one. You've got again, it's it's the conditions making it. You're trying to find out what the bigger mistake is. But we've decided on it, and going through to our top eight is Zach. Zach McGillivray goes through to our top eight. Let me have to explain that for you. So look, there was some moments of brilliance from both drivers. There was some mistakes. There was some areas that they dropped a wheel here and there. But for us, I mean, M uh, Michael Essa, when he comes through the center section of the course, he almost spins the car. He goes on way too much angle. He loses Zach. Completely now because it's wet, he can get the car and he's a great pro. He can get himself back in the mix. But Zach was kind of smooth over both runs. He didn't have any major errors on either run. And it looked to me like Michael dropping the two wheels twice on his lead run and then having that almost over rotation in his chase run was the bigger mistakes of the two runs. And that's pretty much what we decided on. So we're going to go back to the one more time.